Parish Council today being April the 13th, 2022, six o'clock. All of the uh, notices and posted signs have been sent and published, so let's uh, get started. Uh, to get started, let's open with the word of prayer, Mr. King, would you? Uh, Ms. Sandy's gonna take care of that for me tonight. Thank you, Ms. Sandy. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you tonight. We thank you so much. Please bless the people of our parish and Lord, we pray that you would. Amen. Mr. Mark Harrell, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you very much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What's up? I, I got it here. Thank you. Thank you. But you I, I don't think the speakers will. Um, just to let everyone know, Excuse me. Uh, you might want to just check your cell phones before we get started just to make sure there's no major interruptions or anything like that. What I'd like to do today uh, to make sure we have a quorum here today to make sure we have one. Miss Sandy, would you call the roll to see if we have over five council members or five? Mr. Garley House? Here. Mr. McMorris? Here. Mr. King? Here. Mr. Talbert? Here. Mr. Dillat? Here. Mr. Wascom? Here. Ms. Sandifer? Here. Mr. Ard? Here. Mr. Mack? Here. All present. All present. We are officially, we'll have a parish council meeting tonight. Um, Also, I want to let everyone know we will have public input if, on any particular item. If there's something that you want to speak on, please raise your hand. I will acknowledge you. And then when it gets to that item, I'm going to ask. We have a long agenda this evening. If you would uh, try to limit your comments to a minimum, of, you know, a maximum of three minutes and try not to repeat something that someone else has said, but get your point across and, and so we can get to get on. And I'm, and because the agenda is so long tonight, I'm going to ask the council to help me with that as well. So um, the first item we have is presentations. Um, and I would like to recognize the Honorable Judge Jerry Denton, elected official. And I also like to recognize Mr. Jimmy Gilbert, the city councilman for Dental Springs. Is there any other elected officials that I'm missing here tonight? Yeah, we got a constable out there. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't catch your name or I'd... Leroy Owens. Leroy. Brenda Stewart. Ms. Stewart, thank y'all so much for being here. Robert Edwards. Robert Edwards. Robert from Edward. Watson's in the back. Okay, I remember Mr. Robert. Robert years ago. Um, but the first item we're going to have is a, a presentation or a swearing event of Miss Erin Sandifer. She uh, just recently got elected to Parish Council District 5, and so she'd like to ask you to participate in her swearing in. So I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Jerry Denton and Miss Erin Sandifer. Baby boy, Jimbo. Just gonna hold the Bible for me. All right. Any for the state of Louisiana parish of Livingston, please repeat after me. I, Aaron Sandifer. I, Aaron Sandifer. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution that I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of this state and the Constitution and laws of this state and that I will faithfully and impartially that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me all the duties incumbent on me as as councilwoman according to the best of my ability and understanding according to the best of my ability and understanding. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you very much.
to do Bob, you know Bob. He's got to give his. Okay, thank you. Oh, you got it? No. I'm going to say it can Yes. Thank you, Ms. Sanford. Congratulations on your on your victory. I know it's a hard it's a hard battle sometimes. Next item on the agenda is item eight. It's a notice of consideration of action regarding the Livingston Parish Health Unit. Um, this will not will not take action on this, but we are required to inform the public and everyone. So the notice is let this hereby be the notice given that the parish of Livingston state of louisiana we will meet here may the 11th 2023 at 6 p.m in the council chambers in the government building to discuss at which time we will consider taking action regarding the calling of an election regarding the renewal of an existing and ad valorem tax dedicated to acquiring sites for and or constructing improving maintaining operating the parish health unit so we'll have a uh, the plan is to have the discussion and public hearing here May the 11th for the uh, renewal of the tax for the health unit, of, which would be in the fall, I think, October 14th. So there will be no action on that tonight. Uh, let's do councilman comments real quick. Does anyone have anything or you want to just save it till the end? I'd just rather save it to the end if y'all good with that. Thank you. Uh, uh, I, I do have one that oh, I think I'd like to do Mr. Art, right go now. Ahead. Uh, Monday is uh, chipping in for St. Jude. Uh, this year they're actually Tuesday or Monday? Monday. Monday. And they're doing it at <coughs> Carter's and Greystone this year. So we're having it at, at both of our golf courses. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's going to be uh, a, an auction, a concert, at Greystone around five o'clock. So uh, this has been an awesome event that I'm proud to say our parish does this and we've raised a lot of money for St. Jude. So anybody that could go out to either of them places and help out, it'd be beneficial for some kids that truly need this. And the date again, Jeff? The date again? It's Monday the 17th. <coughs> All right, Mr. Mack? Yeah, I appreciate that, John. So two things. Um, one is uh, keep Livingston Parish beautiful. That group, uh, keep Livingston Parish beautiful, is sponsoring a litter cleanup in the Albany area. Um, I think they're going to meet up at uh, the Kitchen Group uh, facility out there. It's uh, it's going to be on the 22nd of April. And I just anybody that wants to help clean up litter, Clean up Livingston Parish is welcome to come out there. I think they're going to get started up around 8 o'clock that morning. I wanted to also say, this is the second announcement, I'm not going to be able to be there because the Louisiana State High School Bass Fishing Championship is that weekend. And my team that I sponsor out of Albany, Louisiana, qualified for that state tournament, so I'll be fishing that. But I'll be with that group that's cleaning up that litter in spirit, and I'm gonna try to put 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 a little team out there to <laughs> help clean up clean up that parish. So I just well, you, yeah, you know, that's, try to clean up and clean up them streams with all them bass that are yeah it, so. yeah. So cross your fingers that we uh, that we win the state championship. Good. My Thank team you. there, that would be great. Good. Thank you, Mr. Mack. So we also have two little fellers in uh, Free Salem that is also going to be competing. They set like number one right now in the state. So uh, hopefully they'll, they'll do real well. I hope we bring first, second, and third back to Livingston Parish. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Well, fantastic. That's good news. Um, Mr. Carlinghouse. You did one third of that. Why don't you just go ahead and. Ask for constant comment now. And give Do you it. have something? No. Okay. I mean, but if you just I, I, I looked at everybody and everybody, okay. everybody said no. I just thought maybe you had something. No, I'm just saying if you do it now, then you won't have to do it again. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, no. Okay. At the end, everybody gonna be ready to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and do item 10. Adopt the minutes of the meeting March 7th and the uh, March 23rd regular council meeting and the March 7th Jubin Crossing. Community development meeting. Is there a motion to a motion, motion by Mr. Ard, seconded by Mr. Mack? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Parish President's report is the first one is a resolution in port of support of proclamation declaring April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Miss um, Hannah Wilson, is that, are you here? 
I know there were some ladies that wanted to speak on this. If y'all don't mind, come up. I think um, we have someone to read the proclamation, but I, I believe you wanted to say a, a word or two. Am I correct? Go ahead and... You get to the podium, the podium right there where everybody can hear you, the TV can see you, and state your name and address, please. Hi, I am Jessica Greer. And your this address. is Brandy Picker. And your address. Oh, my address, like my house address? That's fine. Uh, do you okay. live in Livingston? I do. Okay. I yes. <laughs> um, and we're with Child Advocacy Services. I'm Brandy Pickard, and I'm an advocate supervisor with Child Advocacy Services, and I live in Albany. Okay. Yes. So April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and at our agency we work with children of abuse and neglect and in the foster care system so that's just a little of what we do and the pinwheels are to spin a change for child abuse so all of you can take one home um, and plant it in your yard pass it on to somebody just to help spread awareness spin the wheel for change yes, yes. would you like to have miss Aaron Sanford read the proclamation I'd love it okay 2023 Child Abuse Prevention Month Proclamation. Whereas, child abuse and neglect is a complex and ongoing problem in our society, affecting many children in our community and, whereas every child is entitled to be loved, cared for, nurtured, feel secure, and be free from verbal, sexual, emotional, and physical abuse and neglect, and whereas it is the responsibility of every adult who comes in contact with a child to protect that child's inalienable right, inalienable right to a safe and nurturing childhood. And whereas Livingston Parish has dedicated individuals and organizations who work daily to counter the problem of child maltreatment and to help parents obtain the assistance they need. And whereas our communities are stronger when all citizens become aware of child maltreatment prevention and become involved in supporting parents to raise their children in a safe and nurturing environment. And whereas effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships among families, social service agencies, schools, religious and civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business and community. And whereas all citizens, community agencies, faith organizations, businesses will work to increase their efforts to support families. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Parish of Livingston hereby proclaims the month of April 2023 to be Child Abuse Prevention Month. Parish President Layton Rick Ricks commends this ob observance during April 2023 to the citizens of Livingston Parish. Senator, would you put that resolution in the form of a motion and we'll adopt it? Make a motion to adopt Okay, I'll resolution. make a motion to I'll adopt second. 2023 second. Child Mr. Abuse Prevention Month. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That proclamation is adopted by the council. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Item 11B is an introduction of ordinance. This is um, for the sale of surplus plot property. It's 16 lots in Pine Bluff Acres. Uh, it's this property. I think was uh, acquired through FDIC by the parish and. It, it was acquired back during the Grimmer administration, and uh, everyone's gone through the process now, so we, it can be sold legally. And uh, just want to introduce the ordinance. Miss Eddie, would you read by title? This new proposed ordinance 23-08 is an ordinance to declare certain immovable property 16 lots in Pine Bluff Acres South Subdivision property as surplus property, and to authorize the private sale, public auction, and/or disposal of said property described herein. The public hearing will be on Thursday, April 27th at 6 p.m. I, um, is there a motion? Yeah, motion. No, so yeah. I have Mr. Mack. Yes, Second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, uh, item 11A is the uh, introduction of an ordinance for, to acquire movable property for the parish of Livingston. Uh, Mr. Harold, you want to, uh, with the next two, Probably. you want to talk about these real quick? 12A. 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 I'm sorry, 12A and 12B. Yes, all right, so 12A is uh, another acquisition through the hazard mitigation program to uh, buy a lot in Cypress Point, home and lot. So I want to introduce that ordinance. Ms. Sandy, would you read by title, please? This will be proposed ordinance 23-09. It's an ordinance to acquire movable property 
for the Parish of Livingston pursuant to the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program project number FEMA-4277-DR-LA-0124 Livingston Parish and the homeowner in question is Melissa Strickland and the address is 15987 Cypress Point Lane in French Settlement. There are motions to sell. Motion by Mr. Mc Joe McMorris, seconded by Mr. Randy DeLatt. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. And item B, I guess we'll do the same thing. Yes, that's uh, purchasing a, uh, a home in uh, Sandra Drive in uh, Walker. Uh, All right, Ms. Sandy, would you read that one by title, please? This will be proposed ordinance 23-10. It's an ordinance to acquire a movable property for the Parish of Livingston pursuant to the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program Project number FEMA-4277-DR-LA. Dash zero one three one dash Livingston Parish. The homeowner is Jack Allen Jr. and the address is one one three nine five Sandra Drive, Walker, Louisiana. All right. Is there a motion by Mr. Ard and a second by Mr. Gerlinghouse? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. The next items is from C through which was it, Mark? Mark, so we can do C through J. This is uh, necessary resolutions to move forward with a grant for CB CBG funding. Uh, Make that motion. That, there you go. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ms. Sandy, I think needs to read through these real quick, if I'm not mistaken, to make this legitimate. That's a lot of reading. We're, we're going to be adopting these things by consent. It's a consent agenda. So, so if nobody objects, we're good. So C through, C through J, o, correct? C through O or C through J? C through O or C through J? C through J, because O. Uh, all right. Is there any opposition? A motion to? I can second. I think there was a motion already. Motion by Mr. DeLatt, seconded by Mr. Mack. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It carries. Okay, K. Right. I'm sorry. Item K. Uh, K. All right, so you just approved the previous <laughs> ones. Now we can move forward with uh, the grant. So on this one, we're asking for a uh, resolution to uh, allow Mr. Ricks to sign a contract with ELOS Environmental to do the environmental for this grant. You just passed resolutions to move forward on. Motion by Mr. Talbert. Second by Mr. Ard. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. The next one is uh, basically the same grant, uh, awarding it to uh, quality engineers. Uh, so if I can get a resolution on that. Motion by Mr. McMorris. Second by Mr. Keene. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. M. All right, M is just another resolution for the Fair Housing Month for Livingston Parish. That's part of our requirement, too. Uh, it got moved down. Motion by Mr. DeLatt, seconded by Mr. Keene. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, Mr. Harrell. Z o in N. November. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, as you know, every time we have a disaster, we go through the painstaking uh, task of doing uh, nationwide 37 permits to clear waterways. It's a one-time uh, permit. Takes forever to get them, but we get them and move on. What I'm asking is ARPA will allow us to get permits, and we've been doing it. If you Thanks. allow me to, we can get ELOS to come in and do what they call a 159 permit. It's longer, it's a little more expensive than the nationwide 37s. However, it's a five-year permit with a five-year extension. So we get these done and approved every time a disaster hits for the next 10 years, we're ready to go immediately. I'll make that motion. Yeah, yeah like we all need Motion by Mr. Jeff Ard. Second. Second by Mr. Mack. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? You see, Mr. Harrell? Oh, I have one thing to say before you finish. I know we're going to item O, but. All right, oh, the next one. <laughs> I'm asking for another change order for Sharky Mechanical. As we're going through all the air conditioning, we've had problems. Uh, so we, gotcha. I'm asking for a change. All right, we have a motion by Mr. DeLatt, second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. All right. That was quick. Thank Mr. Harrell, so I, I, it's my understanding that somewhere in this audience this Saturday, someone's turning 66 years old to have Ooh, a birthday. Yeah, true. Ooh. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Would that, person, would that, would that person raise their hand? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, thank congratulations. Thank you, right, right. Right. Knowing I'm 66 and had this many items, you should have had me a bar stool to sit up here. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank Thanks, so Mark. All right. Appreciate it. Item, excuse me, item 13, Livingston Players <laughs> Planning and Zoning. This is a, a servitude revocation for a, a, base, a basic paintball. Um, Mr. Talbert, do you want to talk about this? Just introduction to ordinance. 
Yes. I, it was it was approved. It was they 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 had to request a, a, a quit claim. Yeah, it was two lots that were combined into one. He said, and the servitude was moved. So, right. I mean, you want to, uh, Gary? Can I read something about it that Sam had just sent? Sure. Okay. Actually, uh, he asked if I would read his. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Randy. Okay, he that's did okay. tell me that. Yes. That's okay. It, it, Gary answered, but he wanted to make sure that these words were said in it. It is the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission to approve the servitude ratification of basic paint ball. The servitude is no longer necessary since the back lot is combined with the lot to the northeast. And that's what he wanted to make sure that we knew about, Gary. Oh, you know, motion you want to make that? Motion, motion introduced by Mr. Talbert? Yeah. Second by Mr. DeLatte? Yeah, whoever. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. And you got a reintroduction by fire. Okay, I'm sorry. What's the, yeah. He proposed ordinance number 23-11. Um, this is an ordinance, the map showing revocation of a 50 feet all purpose servitude located on track LM2A1 located at the end of Ruby Moore Road, Denham Springs, Louisiana, located in section 45, township five, south range three, east, Greensburg Land District, Livingston Parish. For basics paintball LLC being more particularly described herein. And the public hearing will be on Thursday, April the 27th at 6 p.m. All right, that'll be at the next council meeting. Um, the next item is B, AT&T. Mr. DeLatte, did you want to speak on that one as well? He, he also asked me to read this one off, and uh, <clears throat> the engineers, uh, SMW <coughs> Engineering Group, the councilman district is Jeff Ords, um, and it's on the John Lanier Road. And it was voted unanimous, and it says, this the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission to approve the final site plan for AT&T Tower with the waiver request, with the recommendation that the waiver letters from the neighbors be recorded. All councilmen should have a copy of the waivers in their possession now. They were submitted to us from the neighborhood property owners. All right, Mr. Ard, that's your district. Yep, I see the letters I need to see, and that's right around the corner from my house, and uh, we have terrible service, so I am all for that. <laughs> Uh, motion by Mr. Hard. Yes. Set the plan. Second there. by Mr. Zlatt. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Item 14 is through the planning, uh, parish planning department. South Creek second filing. This would be to the accept the roads and improvements into the maintenance system. This is in, I think, Miss Sandifer's district. Uh, maybe uh, the uh, motion would be to accept the roads and release the bond at the same time. A motion. Motion for that. Second. Second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries item B. Spring Lake, eighth phase two. Uh, this is in, I think, Jeff's district as well. Uh, same thing, accept the roads and improvements and release the bond for $39,480.10. Mr. Ard, are you motion. okay with that? Motion by Mr. Ard. Second. Second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 15, this is to uh, a reschedule a public hearing and adoption of LPR and it's 2306. I believe we already introduced this at a council meeting. We didn't have the quorum, so now we're doing the public hearing as well. Uh, is there anyone here to speak for or against? Part? Schedule it for April 27th. Okay, so we didn't. It has to be announced in a meeting for the public. Okay, so I, I, I'm, uh, so is today the introduction? Yes. No, today is the rescheduling of the introduction. Okay. It will be when it's adopted. It's already been introduced February 23rd. So we're just going to reschedule it to the next council meeting for public hearing then and for adoption. Okay, I was on the impression that we've already introduced it, so this would be the it, Yeah, okay. Been introduced right. Now. Okay. Yeah, on February 23rd. All right, so there's no action. Is there any action needed on that? Oh. Just to state it's going to be on said, April 27th at 6 p.m. All right, there will be a public hearing for adoption of LP ordinance 20, 2306, zoning classifications for non-conformities. Mr. Mack had put this ordinance together to help people's property that uh, didn't meet the current zoning because of the use they've been used their land for 20 years so it just allows it's an ordinance for that so we'll pick that up next one the next item is 16 is to reschedule public hearing adoption of lp artists 2307 uh this is for the redistricting of i mean rezoning creation of zoning districts r25 
is that the same thing, or can we uh, uh, have a motion to? You just got to reschedule it. I, I, I thought we had to vote. I did too, Gary. I, okay, well, that's fine. We'll just reschedule that one. <laughs> Item 17, adopt resolution to reduce the speed limits on Carter Cemetery Road in Panther Road to 35 miles an hour, Mr. Randy DeLatt. It's currently 45 miles an hour, and, and the residents would rather see it go to 35, so we'd have to change it. I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Delance, yeah. second by Mr. Garlinghouse. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? You got a question? Yeah, I have one. Mr. Booty, you listening to the ball game over there? <laughs> What's the score? <laughs> I don't want to know. Six to nothing. It's six to nothing. Aye. Uh, Tigers. Uh, he had a question. You had something, Gerald? Randy, is that going to be in the town, just in the, with the homes, or that's going to be the whole road going in there to the... It, it, it's not the whole road because state's got part of it, the city's got part. This is on the parish part. Okay, thank you. It's, it just goes right to the Y. Yeah. That's the only thing that the parish owns. I appreciate it. Uh, item 18, installation of speed bumps on Bush Lane, located in District 2, Mr. Talbert. Look. I'm going to take the hit on this. We we overlaid Bush Lane, which was a parish road. About the, there, there was one house on it. I remember. And there was a high school baseball field, softball field, and exit for the high school at the end. We have created a little... Monster. We have created a drag strip. <laughs> so there is a private funding for speed bumps. And I contacted... And actually, the, 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 the state law allows speed bumps to be installed on public highways, public roads. Uh, I contacted uh, the director of public works before I introduced this thing, and he typically isn't in favor of this. But in this particular situation, he has grandchildren that attend that high school. He knows about the problems that exist. So we would like permission to install speed bumps. The, the, the private funding source will contact the contractor, get the design, submit them to Public Works, at which point in time when Public Works says grace over it, then they will be installed on Bush Lane. I have a question. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Um, this, this private fund, do you know how much money is in this private fund? You know, I had looked at my checkbook balance lately, but whatever it is, it's in it. <laughs> okay, well, this, the reason I'm asking is because there are about five roads in my district that are begging me for speed bumps, so I need them in my district as well. I need them uh, on well, Plantation am, Avenue, I, Hunter's I, Way, and to Planter Place in Plantation Estates. Look, Aaron, I'm the private fund, to be honest with you. I'm paying to get these things put out. I created the monster. I'm going to pay to fix it. I just I'm, I'm I'm in that situation, so I feel fortunate that I can, and I'm and I'm told the people that are live there that have the problem that deal with the high school kids living every day that I would help resolve their issue. Uh, there, so that that's the private funding source. I'm, I'm just going to okay. with you. So, I mean, I'm not saying you know if you have a situation like that, then I would look at the HOAs or people that live in it to try to resolve your issue. They don't have HOAs. Well. I'm I understand. But you know, they're going to come back after they, well, they hear saying, this I mean, and they're going to want to know why they can't have them. 25 them. residents on the road, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what is, after we get the thing done, I'll tell you what it cost. And okay. you can sit there and, and, and go to those people and say, look, this is what it cost on Bush Lane to get two sets of speed bumps and stuff. I would really like that and because in, in one of those cases, I know that they have offered to pay for it themselves. So, and that, so, and, and look, I, I'm not asking the parents to install it. And if look, if this was a, if this was a heavily traveled, like public road, it's a public road. Technically, it's a public road. However, it is the same kids leaving the school every day. They're, you know, it's not like school buses travel it. Maybe visiting <laughs> teams might travel it. You know, to to get back to the baseball softball fields. Uh, it is a it is an alternative exit if there's a hit situation on Highway 16, but uh, it has become a it has become a problem because it is a straight, smooth shot. And, and I got I gotta be honest, if I, I was if, if I was 16, they'd be calling on me. So I'm not. I'm it, not you is know, there I'm just, in, in there some residents live the past that? I know there's, there's some there's there's one home that there's one home in the back and another home in the front that really are, are they gonna be okay so with that? Gary? They, they, they're, they're, they're the ones that contact me. They're the ones that there's a there's an old home in the back and there's another newer home in the front. They're the ones that contact me. Mr. Batch here. I just I just want to say I think that's very generous to you know pay for that so that it can be safer for the kids to travel down that road but it's not just about the cost 
to install. Um, it's about the cost to maintain in the future. So I just want to say, you know, before we would want to vote in favor, you, you would need to work out all those details, you know, so that it can be maintained in the future, if the road's overlaid in the future, who who pays to reinstall and things of that nature. I mean, I, I mean if they're okay with them being removed you know, if, when they tear up, because I think they're going to wind up tearing up over time. And all, all I can tell you is that is that we're going to have them put down properly. I'm going to see what type of warranty they're going to have with them that, that transfers to the parish. If, the, if, if they become inoperable at some point in time in the future and the parish needs to remove them, then they remove them. And if, and if there's not a, you know, if, and there's no additional funds at a later date to, to reinstall them, they can't be reinstalled. I, I'm looking to solve this immediate problem. I'm not going to become the long-term maintenance provider of those two speed bumps, but I will, I will solve the initial problem, you know, and if, if they need to be removed the late date, they need to be removed. I'm just asking for permission for installation. All uh, right, Mr. DeLatt, I will get you. Mr. I'm not DeLatt. saying I'm for it or against it. But I just want to make sure if we do it, we do it correctly. And that's how I'm going to answer Mr. Moody over here. I know we don't have an ordinance in place. The revised statute, Gary quotes, gives us that authority to have an ordinance. Is that what we have to do, do an ordinance or? Um, I think it gives you authority to, to have them. I'm not sure you need an ordinance, uh, but I'll, okay. I haven't looked at it in a while. So what, what's our liability? In the past, when I asked for speed bumps, we couldn't get them because it said a liability issue. That's we right. didn't have yeah. an ordinance. That, that, that was my it's point. It's controversial. Right? It's better to rely on your engineering guidance on speed bumps in most places because it creates other problems, you know, how quickly the fire and police can get down the road and it, you know, can... It's, it's not always the best solution to slow traffic down. Um, you can use those speed, uh, this is your speed limit kind of sign is one, one other way. Uh, increased enforcement is another. So uh, but you, it does create a, a, a problem because if they're not put in right or they're too large and it can cause damage to people's cars, if you don't give them the right notice and the right signage, et cetera. So, you know, they're popular by some people, but they're very unpopular with others. But you're saying that there's no liability for us and we don't need an ordinance, right? I don't think you need an ordinance, but I will look at it before you adopt it. Well, this is not an ordinance, is it? No. This is actually a resolution it's giving just permission. Giving it's just permission asking, to yeah. install, it's asking right. for permission to install. Right. Yeah, I don't think you need an ordinance for, that, to that even do question. that. that I mean, the in the old days, you were doing ordinances for every you know stop sign, et cetera. I mean, you, you have the authority to do that by resolution. Okay, that was the question. I just make Mars. Uh, you answered uh, three of my questions already. But one, one thing, this has came up like four times since I've been on council, and I was looking for Mr. Joe. Uh, he was here earlier, uh, the fire chief. He was a big uh, guy that was against the, the speed bumps because in the Sanford, you said you had a bunch of homeowners who want the speed bumps. We got to consider the fire, fire departments right off the bat, uh, Katie and the ambulance. So uh, we probably need to get the firemen over to the districts also to look, to look at them to help you guys out. Thank you. Albert, your motion was to a uh, uh, resolution? Motion was to, to get permission to install two speed bumps on Bush Lane after the review process was approved by the director of the Department of Public Is Order. there a second? There is no second? I second, second it. it. Oh, okay. I was thinking second it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, did, did you, you want know, to say something, Tracy? I did. I'm sorry. Go I, ahead. No, that's okay. I, I didn't say I, I didn't say that I want to, but I do now. There was a pause. I think it, you, you, Mr. Tower's paying for it to be put down. Balance the danger of high school kids driving over speed bumps and that causing an accident versus them going. Hitting fast somebody. As that, that fast as that car will go or whatever. This road is primarily probably traveled by that, considering there's only two houses. Ooh, uh, I'm, I understand the road, but I think the greater risk would be can really I do it. And considering the, the, the dynamic. Sure. That's it. All right. Don't is, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Don't, don't is concern I had is that. I didn't want a whole bunch of people coming up here, then we had to say we couldn't do it. It seems to me that it's a, it perfectly fits in that location what he's asking yes, to do. That, it I seems it makes niche. sense. This to me, it makes sense. Anyone else? I just, I just, 
I mean, I don't want to booger it up, but is it possible we add to it that the parish is not responsible for maintaining the speed bumps? I don't mean. I mean, we're not. I'm not asking. I mean, if the if if the speed bumps come in disrepair, the parish has every opportunity to pull them up. I mean, I, I have no issue. With that. All right. Well, so we have a motion by Mr. Tyler, second by Mr. Gronghouse. I would like to make a real quick comment. Uh, I'm 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 just really applaud you for pulling money out of your own pocket to pay for this mr talbert it's a heart of compassion for the first time you'll hear me say i really appreciate this <laughs> but also I, i'm i'm gonna vote against this for this reason that i just think that it opens up a can of worms so it's not because of personal oh, i no, really no. appreciate your your compassion i will use your spend your own money for this so we have a motion in a second mr tracy let me let me clarify I, this is the, the, <laughs> this has been these people have tried to get me to do this since the road was overlaid. It has been a problem, and 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 we have tried every means possible. I understand to, to to resolve the issue, and and this is trust me, this is a last resort. This is not, you know, this is not the first attempt at trying to slow slow the traffic right. down on the road. And and the ironic thing is, if you ride through the school property, where they have those long stretches of roads. They got speed bumps all over the place, right. and so you know it's just it's the it's the same same individuals that are driving on the school private property that are now driving on that public street. Let's, and, uh, let's call for the vote, Miss Sandy. Would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Garland House. Yes. Mr. Mike Norris. No. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Talbert. Yes. Mr. Delat. Yes. Mr. Wascom. No. Miss Sandifer. Yes. Mr. Ard. <laughs> yes. Mr. Mack. Yeah. All right, next item on the agenda is a request to authorize a waiver of section 127.37 requirements for minor subdivisions for Terry Mathern located on Highway 16 uh, French settlement. This is in Mr. Randy Delat, I believe, and Gerald McMorris's district. Y'all, one of y'all want to take yeah, this? Yeah, uh, so we, uh, we had to split this up. It goes between district six and district eight. Uh, uh, yeah, six and eight. So it's, uh, it's 120 acres. They had to split up between seven si siblings. So, uh, we asking for a waiver for the uh, 40 foot servitude. That's a motion I by Mr. That. Gerald McMorr, second by Mr. Randy Delatt. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion carries. Yeah. Item 20, adopt a resolution authorizing waiver of section 127.37 requirements for minor subdivisions to reduce the required 60 foot feet, 60 feet servitude and use the existing 20 foot feet excess servitude located in the northwest corner. Mr. Randy, would you explain this as it yes. is in if your you, district? If you got your map in front of you. It should say uh, Culture's Bluff <laughs> Road and not Davison Road. Davison Road has a 100-foot servitude there. You see it on Davison. Culture's Bluff, they only have 20-foot of servitude, and that's all he hit property he has. That's been there since 1967. The other people own the other servitude, and they don't want to give up their property for a servitude. So I'm asking for a waiver for, to leave the 20-foot servitude in existence. That's been there since 1967. Motion, Motion by okay. Mr. Uh, DeLatte, okay. second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor say aye. 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 Not any opposed? Motion carries. Item 21 is to adopt a resolution to grant a waiver request for section 123, 125-37 for minor subdivision for the number of lots on a servitude assessment, and this is located in Mr. Max's district. Deborah Woodward, I believe, Shane? Yeah, so they they contacted me. This is a large piece of property, and they're trying to cut out a piece for their uh, one of their children. Um, they've owned this property for a long time, it's, it's my understanding, and they're just <laughs> trying to give one of their children a place to live. So I'm asking, I'd like to make that motion, we grant that waiver. I second it. Motion by Mr. Shane Mack, uh, second by Mr. Ladd. Any discussion? None being all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion carries. Item 22 is board reappointments. Uh, let's run through theirs. Mr. Mack, I believe you have Livingston Parish Fire Protection District 1. I do. And we need to ratify some board appointments. Sid Woods is uh, I get resigned, uh, and we need to, uh, I guess you could say, ratify James Chrisholm. He was appointed by the town of Albany. Uh, I'll it's second, it, I'll second. Motion. Yeah, yeah I'll I'll make that to, motion. You got that name, Miss Sandy? 
Yeah, it, so it's Chisholm. Chisholm. It's Chisholm. Chisholm. Yeah. Motion Chisholm. by Mr. Mack, second by Mr. Talbert. All in favor say aye. 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 The next item is the Waterway Commission, Mr. McMorris. So uh, we're going to uh, make a motion to uh, sell Kathy Posey uh, in a replacement of Adele Severio. It's just absenteeism problem that we're having. Okay. To, uh, she'll be there. She's there every meeting. Uh, except Miss Kathy Posey by Mr. Gerald McMorris, seconded by Mr. Scooter King. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. C. Livingston Parish Convention Center and Bureau Visitors Center. So I, I asked this question. <coughs> we we voted on Mr. Lee Benkas. Yeah. Did the letter get mailed to you? I see y'all have it highlighted, but uh. Okay, it was voted on late four meetings ago. But anyway, I'll make a motion to accept I him as alternate. So what, what's the motion here? Uh, we're going to accept him on the uh, alternate. Okay, to Lynn, be, motion by Lynn to accept Miss Lynn, <coughs> Ben Cass, seconded by <coughs> Mr. Dillat. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, I see Livingston Parish Convention and S Visitor Center, Mr. Ms. Sandifer. Um, motion to uh, appoint Donna Jennings. Donna Jennings, Mo second by second. Mr. Tracy Gerlinghouse. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. D, Livingston Parish Airport District. Mr. DeLatt. Uh, Mr. Jerry Lobel uh, resigned for health reasons, and I don't know if we had accepted that or not, but uh, I think we did. If, if we didn't, we can do it tonight. I want to appoint uh, Thomas Bruiser, Bryson the third, to ex Take that turn. How about, about a motion? Oh, How about a motion yeah. to do both, accept okay. resignation and appoint the Miss Sandy. It's expired. You don't have to do that. Uh, accept his resignation. Accept the new one. Seconded Second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item E: Fire Protection District Nine. Mr. Delat. <coughs> uh, fire Protection. Yeah, District. Skip that one. What's that? It was. It's already been done. It's done. Yep. All right, well, that brings us to item F, Livingston Parish Library Board, <coughs> Mr. Gary Tow. Uh, at, uh. at this point in time, I'd like to uh, appoint Ms. Francine Smith uh, right. uh, to the Livingston Parish Library Second Board that. to uh, replace uh, Ms. Henson, who we, had, who we had removed previously. Ms. Smith is in the audience tonight. There's her raising her hand. She, uh, I think, you know, I, I, I've known Ms. Smith because our, our children my youngest and her oldest, I believe, played basketball together in, in junior high and high school. Uh, serves as librarian at Pine Pine Ridge for the Livingston Parish School District, and uh, we 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 don't agree on every. We have some common ground, and she promised to call me back every time I reached out to her. Nice. So, is, we, that, is that a motion? I'll that's my motion. A second. Mr. King, up. Mr. King got it. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say, up. Oh, we got a question from the audience. Thank you for popping your hand up there, Miss Abby. I uh, <laughs> would not have, uh, I was moving on. <laughs> Abby Crosby, Livingston, Louisiana. Thank you for appointing someone to the library board, Mr. Gary. Um, also, I'd like to make it known that uh, during all this with the library board and everything, things are flaring up and tempers and, you know, People were getting upset and, you know, differences of opinions and everything. <clears throat> but I just want to put, put it on the record that uh, during this time where motions were high and everything, um, the lady that you appointed, Ms. Smith, I talked to uh, Councilman Gerlinghouse about it, um, wrote some very nasty things on social media, talking about uh, banning small businesses and uh, writing a name and putting it out there of hurting small businesses in Livingston Parish. And it was also done by a fake account. So this is the same woman during a public meeting at the school board told us, uh, my husband and I, along with another friend, um, she didn't want to talk to us, to shut up and to sit down. So is this the kind of person that we really want serving on a public library board? to be able to address someone in public, in a public meeting like that, being a school teacher in a public meeting where we all have the right to our First Amendment, but we don't have the right to attack someone during that process. So I talked to Mr. Gerlinghouse about that, and he remembers the conversation, and I pointed it out to him. But it's nothing personally against 
the person, but it's what's been said and what's been done after that. And I just wanted to make y'all aware of that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Havig. Look, I mean, there are people in the heat of the moment that say things that they don't always mean or they, they, they realize at a later time they might regret. Look, Ms. Ms. Francine and I didn't always see that eye. And, and we don't see that eye on everything at this point in time. But, but in, the, in discussions with her about the library, I do feel her heart's in the right place. And so given that something? situation, Mr. I would Chairman. like to make this appointment. I, I have something to say. We, we would it be one, possible? Real quick, uh, bro, I'm just making sure we had a motion and a second. So go ahead, Ms. Hannifer. Would it be possible to postpone this to the next meeting so that we can discuss it? Question. That's inappropriate to, no, to as many struggles as the library and the library board has had in the past with things flaring up in the public that are simply not true. This could this perpetuate that? You can't remove it. You, you, can you, would you please consider? No. I, 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 yeah, Mr. Gurley asked? Well, uh, I'll call John, the question. Uh, uh, I think. There's a library board member. He called the question. Uh, Mr. Moody, he when the question, the question is called, is there, does that stop discussion? Yes, unless there's, uh, if there's no opposition to the call of the question. If somebody opposes it, then it goes to a vote to whether you continue the debate. Y'all want to go to the call for the question? Anybody right. against it? We got a vote. Uh, we got a motion by Mr. Talbert, second by Mr. King. Uh, Mr. King. Wait, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> What's that? He says he's got to call for a vote. We have to call for the vote. Does the discussion always follow a motion in a second? Yeah, but if somebody calls for the previous, that's a motion to end debate. So if that is opposed, then the person can say, I wish to continue debate. Do y'all want to let debate. the people in the audience speak on this or no? I wish to continue debate. And there needs to be a vote, vote on that, on Mr. Chairman. All right. Let's vote to keep, let the people in the audience speak. Um, start, call roll, Ms. T Ms. Sandy. Okay, so yes. Yes, yes unless the, continues the debate, unless the people in the audience speak. Uh, we don't need a motion for that. Let's just call the roll to see what the council wishes are. Right. Aaron doesn't have to have a second to her call for yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Uh, so a motion by Ms. Sanifer to second. Motion by Ms. Sanifer to continue the debate. I'm gonna second that. Second by Mr. McMorris. Call the roll, Ms. Sandy. Mr. Gurlinghouse. Yes. Mr. McMorris. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Talbert. No. Mr. Delat. Yes. Mr. Wascom. Yes. Ms. Sanifer. Yes. Mr. Ard. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yes. All right. Mr. I, well, if you would, if you want to speak on this item, raise your hand and I'll get you. I think, Mr. Larry, I saw yours first. Come on up. And if you would, help us out here. Try to keep it to a short, you know, brief thing and so we can rock and roll. <coughs> Give us your name, Mr. Larry. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to go back to what the constituents said. It is a difficult time. We're going through the process of trying to hire a new director to lead us through the future to get away from this stuff. And there have been some inappropriate comments made on the social media uh, platform. I'm 25, I don't make those mistakes. We don't get to go back on what we say, we need to stand on it. And to be called a racist based on scientific and statistic proof as a library board member by a sitting audience member, that's unacceptable. I have a full-time job, I have a family. We don't need those racist, uh, I mean, or inappropriate and libel claims made from the audience. I don't think this is the time to allow more distractions on the library board. We need to focus and get the work done for the people and for the children of our parish. Thank you. Thank you Larry. Anyone else here to speak on this particular item? In the audience? All right, I'll shut down the public hearing from the audience. So we uh, go back to, I guess, the right, does anyone else talk? We'll go back to Mr. Talbert's motion to appoint Ms. Smith. Is that correct? Is there still a second? Yes. Second by Mr. King. <coughs> Ms. Sandy, would you call for the vote? Mr. Gurlinghouse. Yes. Mr. Mike Morris. No. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Talbert. Yes. Mr. DeLatte. Abstain. Waspin. Yes. Ms. Sandifer. No. Mr. Ard. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yes. Oh. 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 What was the final vote, Sandy? Five yes. One abstain and one, two. Four. How many no's? Five to two. Three. Three. Five, three, three no's. Six to two. 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 Six to two.
Five, three, one. Okay. <laughs> Five, six. Jerry. Six. Sorry. Six. Must be six. Yeah, six, two, one. <laughs> um. Ooh, ooh, wee, man. That's the only way to slow this down. All right. Introduction of ordinance. Item twenty-three. Introduction of ordinance of men, chapter one twenty-seven, multifamily development. Uh, Mr. Talbert. Okay. This is this is a this is a a request yeah. from planning. The planning department, if y'all will notice that that there's a couple conflicts here. Uh, the, the first, if you'll, you've got, if, if y'all go to I, the item 23, the introduction, <coughs> on E it strikes out 25 foot buffer zone <coughs> and eight foot fence. It, it strikes out to 25 foot buffer zone and, and may was <coughs> added and shall was stricken out. And then, and then on the on the second line, it said all multifamily units shall adhere to the uh, <clears throat> when there's a second multi-story should adhere to the 50 foot buffer zone. It, it was a typo of 25. So basically, what this allows is that on a single story multifamily development, if the adjacent landowners already have a fence. You can waive. They can. They can sign an agreement to waive the fence requirement, but they cannot waive the buffer zone, which this allowed for the waiver of the buffer zone. However, if there is a two-story apartment complex or multifamily <coughs> dwelling, you cannot waive the fence or buffer zone requirement. Wait a so, minute. That's not true. That's what this ordinance. Says. No, it doesn't. We went through this in the. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to interrupt our dispute i mean it clearly says the uh eight foot fence requirements may be waived if all adjacent landowners to the required buffer zone submit a notarized letter we had this come up in the ordinance meeting we talked about this you know quite a bit and that was the decision that the ordinance committee made and that's what we're pushing for this this was supposed to be sponsored by the ordinance committee to put this on the agenda uh it, gary's right there was this is uh, a clerical error in here it also talked about multi-story having a 25 foot buffer and it <laughs> talked about a 50 foot buffer and it made it difficult for the planning commission to approve or disapprove because we you know it was Aren't contradictory you? this this clarifies if you have a multi-story family multi-family development then you got to have a 50 foot buffer and you cannot waive it but um it, it does allow for a waiver of the eight foot fence. I mean, y'all agree? That's Gary, you I mean, agree? That's not, that's, not what's, that's not what's written on this. That's not what this well, look at is. E. Look at E and read it. I could he be wrong. It says the 25 foot buffer zone and is stricken out. That's correct. Eight foot fence requirements may be waived if all adjacent landowners to the required buffer zone submit a notarized letter of no objection on a single floor multi-family development only all multi-story family units shall adhere to the 50-foot buffer zone and that's eight not foot that's fence not what was proposed by the ordinance committee that's not the way it was supposed to be the the buffer zone was not supposed to be waived there's but, no there's no buffer zone waving at all in here that's correct the only thing that's allowed to be that, waived it is used the eight to, foot fence you, on a single floor i on agree a single story development used to you could waive the buffer zone now in the future if this passes you can't but when we talked about it in the ordinance committee meeting we agreed that well to the best of my knowledge that you could vote to waive the fence requirement the reason for that is if say for instance you had a you know a large piece of property right and it's a multi-family multi-story you know in your large distance you know with woods surrounding you you wouldn't have to put a fence around it. I mean, it doesn't say that you have to waive it. It just gives you the opportunity if it's the right thing to do to waive it. I mean, I, no, no, Car no. Caroline was in the meeting. Me and her worked on the wording. It was you were supposed to be able to waive it on a, on a, uh, a fence. Mr. King, the, the problem with it, Shane, is that okay? Let's say that big thing. Here's the, here's your apartment complex, and there's woods around it. Yeah. Well, eventually somebody's gonna buy that piece of woods. 
<clears throat> we can't make them go back and put that eight foot fence up later. I think there should be no waiver on that at all. <clears throat> shouldn't, shouldn't the buffer zone or the fence, because that eight foot fence is important. Let's say if we tell them, oh, you don't even have to put any kind of fence because it's, it's woods and then somebody buys it. We can't go back and make them put it later. That's the problem. I think you ought to be able to give a waiver if, if, if you think that's the right thing to do. And, this, and it's a case-by-case -case basis and, you know, you, it, though, you, you and depend. In the future, somebody comes to us and they go, well, they got an apartment complex that's 50 feet from my house. And that's true. But a lot no of, there's a lot of commercial developments being built in Livingston Parish, and we do waive the fence requirement in certain cases. It's this, why is this any different? Why? Well, Get away from the waiver. Uh, another thing is, you know, if, if there's woods all around, like you say, and then somebody goes to build, they're going to see what's there, and then they might put their own fence. So I'm just saying it's, you, you know, I, this is just a I think taking the, the ability from the, away from the parish to make the decision is, right. is, is what Mr. Mack don't want to do. It's better when we don't make a decision. It's Mr. McMullen. So I'm going to ask you guys one more time. Here we are. We, we sitting up here arguing and fighting over our ordinance. Why don't we bring this to the ordinance committee and, and hash it out there? Then, then we'll bring it before the people. Well, that, the, I think the issue is that Ms. Sanders and I had a phone conversation today, and she doesn't even remember the ordinance committee discussing it as our phone. Isn't that what we talked about on the phone? Yeah. Yes. Why do you want to go so there? So no, I'll make a substitute no, no, motion not, to send I'm, it back not, to ordinance. I'm not finished yet. I'm sorry, Ms. Sanford. I'm not trying I'm, to cut you off. We can resolve all these issues, guys, if, it, if you come before the ordinance committee sat down, talk about it. I was in the audience that night. You did this, Shane. There was nobody else here but three of us. Please be here. Let's hash it out. Then we can go move forward. There was only there was only three out here. Yeah. For the, for so two meeting. ordinance committee members. He's, and one he's talking about the audience. I'm talking about the audience. Oh, okay. I wasn't up here. I was in the audience. So, so my question like. is, if the, if oh, the ordinance was amended in the ordinance committee, why is that amended ordinance not what's on the? Well, okay, so we're working on that, okay? But it was amended in the ordinance committee, and it was to allow for the fence is to there a be waived. Problem with sending it back to ordinance so committee? Are you saying this isn't right? What's right. written? So that's not that right. Well, that's not what the ordinance committee agreed to. Let me ask you a question: are You gonna have ordinance committee meeting before the next before the next council meeting? We are. So why don't we introduce it tonight, y'all? Ordinance committee meeting. You can amend it, and we can amend it, and then we can amend it, and then adopt it as amended. Sounds good to me. Or we can delay the that's process. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. That's, that's, Are you, you in a hurry to get it passed? Look, I, I, I'm just carrying the water for planning on this thing. I mean, I was asked. That's why my name's on it. I, I mean, I didn't. Planning asked me to do it, so I, I did it. I didn't. I didn't realize ordinance even took it up. I didn't realize there was the issue. If we move forward. If, if the planning commission meets between now and then, then all we've got to do is amend it at the next meeting when we have the public hearing and then adopt it as amended and we don't drag the process out. And how many more are we going to bring like this and I mean, sit look, here and debate it when it could my, be hashed my, out in ordinance? My question is, why isn't the right ordinance on here? If, if, if ordinance amended it, why isn't the right ordinance up here? Well, we got a little mistake we made, Gary. We need to work on that. Uh, I make, right can I make a substitute motion to send it to ordinance? We have a sub motion uh, to change and then the motion for substitute motion. Is there a second for this? Second by Mr. Mack. Let's vote on the substitute no, motion. I'm in favor. Let's send it. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's going to ordinance committee. Okay. Item 24. Pardon? Fix it. Let's go. Item 24, introduction of ordinance. Mr. Gary Talbert uh, for clearing and grubbing. Uh, this is this was asked planning asked us to bring this planning in because this is part of 125 but it's not a part of 126 so this is the same wording that exists in 125 to be put in 126 and 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 25 is the same thing that's part of 125 that needs to be put in 127 they are they when when we added 126 to deal with commercial development and we added 127 to deal with multifamily we did not bring the clearing and grubbing part of the ordinance over for whatever reason so these are clerical issues so the introduction for for of of of, of this is to bring the clearing and grubbing part of 125 into 126 and the next one is to bring the clearing and grubbing part 
of 125 into 127. I'd like to make a motion to introduce both of those. Are we voting on that or are we just? Uh, uh, we, what's that, Sandy? Go ahead and read by title, Ms. item 24, I guess, and 25. This will be proposed ordinance 23-12. This is an ordinance to amend chapter 126 commercial development by the creation of section 126-12 clearing and grubbing in the code of ordinances for the uh, parish of Livingston. The public hearing will be at 6 p.m. on April 27th. Proposed ordinance 23-13. This is an ordinance to amend chapter 127 multifamily development by the creation of section 127-9 clearing and grubbing in the code of ordinances for the parish of Livingston and the public hearing will be at 6 p.m. April 27th. All right, we have a motion and a second. I have a quick question. I got a couple of questions. Too. Okay, Shane, go ahead. I'm sorry. So all of the ordinance is not in front of us and I agree this is just a clerical fix, right? Um, but I, I wanna make a statement here. If they clear their property before they ever submit their preliminary site plan and you start the process, there's no penalty, okay? I, I, that's my interpretation, and if I'm wrong, I'd like for somebody to clarify that. So if somebody has a commercial piece of property and they wanted to clear it, right, um, you, you can go do that, you know, per the current local law, and then put it up for sale, or then later decide you're gonna go develop it and then submit your, um, you know, plans for review and there's no penalty, right? So this, this would be in effect after they've started the, you know, process to development and after they've, you know, been to, uh, you know, planning department and submitted their, you know, site plans and everything to the planning commission. Do you, do you agree to that? Uh, absolutely. Well, actually, what it, what it mm -hmm. what it says is that it, this would then allow if somebody started clearing a piece of property and they had not had their drainage impact study approved, they're they're able to do some things. They can underbrush. And they can cut a tree down to cut a tree down as long as it's lower than eight inches, smaller than. That's eight not inches. a tree. Well, I'd cut a tree if it's shorter than eight inches. Uh, uh, diameter. Small, diameter. Oh, but okay. the diameter right. tree. But, but so they can do that at any point in time, as long as as long as as long as their erosion control prevention are in place. Right, and I understand what you're saying, but go back to answer. You're gonna okay. If, if they go further than that, right? How do you go do the DIS? You gotta go back to, well, so you gotta go back to historical Google Earth things. And it's gonna penalize those individuals to go back on historic Google Earth to do their drainage impact study. Because there's a good, you know, you follow what I'm talking about? If you, I do, I do, I agree. But go back to, this is all after they've started the development <laughs> process, okay? If, if, it's, if it's clear in property before any of that process has ever started, they welcome to go clear and cut whatever size tree they want to cut, you know, gr you know, do the stump grinding and whatever they, there, there's, no, no, there's no law that's gonna prevent them from doing that, okay? Even this one that we're about to introduce, if they do that before they start the planning and the development process, okay? I mean, do you, that's the question. I mean, do you agree to that? So, I mean, if they wanna just clear their property, level it off, bulldozer it, smooth it off, and put it up for sale, there's, there's no penalty. This is, this is after you start the development I process. I agree that. So That's if you problem. do that, if you do that prior to the process, right, it, it's going to penalize you later. That's no, all I'm no, saying. No, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. It's not going to penalize you. It's going to penalize you only because you've got to go, you've got to have a starting point on the DIS. And if you've moved dirt, and if you've moved dirt before you start the DIS, then you're not getting accurate DIS. This needs to go back to the ordinance committee also. We need to hash this out. This is too important. You can't tell people they can't clear their property and then go not, later and penalize people them. they can't clear their property. That's basically what this is. We, we need to put something in place because it's happening oh, let's bad talk about in my it. district. Let's talk about it. And in Gary's district, right? Send it, hey, hey. Mr. Send, Chairman. Send, send them to plan. Send it, send it to plan. Mr. Mr. Staff. Substitute motion to send, motion to send it to the ordinance committee. and. In the future. Second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That goes to the Ordinance Committee. That's all right. I'm not going to gavel you. <laughs> Just go ahead. 
Uh, let's see here. Introduction of ordinance. Uh, uh, Mr. This next one is Mr. Keene. Uh, this is for amending Chapter 125. Redact section 125-38. Mr. Maurice. Good yes, sir, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wascom. When I when I proposed this to let people live in their RVs, it was for a hardship after we had, you know, hurricanes and floods and things like that, and it has become a nightmare for permitting and uh, people are lined up putting these and renting them out to people. And so we just need to get rid of this thing. Uh, the, the, the exceptions and all that, it, it's, it needs to be where they have to come to us for a waiver. I hate waivers. That's why we put it in place. But... Ms. Sandy, do you want to read by title? Yeah, let, let's read it in... Okay. in well, this will be proposed ordinance 23-12. It's an ordinance to amend Chapter 125 of the Code of Ordinances of Livingston Parish Subdivision Regulations. That's your motion, Mr. King? Yes, and it, you know, and it, it allows people to still do that for up to 180 days but not to rent these out to people and for long-term living. Second. Second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. April 27th. That's the next council meeting. Yes. All right. <coughs> Would you call for the vote? Please. It will be, okay, Mr. Gerlinghouse. Mr. Gerlinghouse. Oh. Have to vote. Yes, vote. Yeah, motion by Pete, second by Gerlinghouse. Yes. Uh, Mr. McMorris. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Talbert. Yes. Mr. Dillette. Yes. Mr. Blossom. Yes. Ms. Sandifer. Yes. Mr. Ard. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yeah. Hey, I want to. I want to. I want to make a statement. Uh, Mr. Mr. DiGirolamo is not here, but Sam, if you're listening, you need to find another councilman to get to carry your water for you on the council. Because if Mr. Talbert introduced it, he got to go before planning. But if Mr. King does, he goes straight before the. Yes, That's not 100 percent of the time, correct? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Yeah. What did he say? <laughs> Introduction of an ordinance um, supporting the Second Amendment of the United States, uh, declaring Livingston oh, did that. Second Amendment. Hey, you skipped one. We have talked about it 27. a lot. Oh, 27. Now, I don't want to skip that, or maybe I do. Introduction of ordinance. This would be banning TikTok, Mr. Talbert. I'm sorry. I, this is like the third time I've seen it. I just passed it over. I forget. Yeah, it's an it's it's introduction. It, it was. It was. We tried to introduce it once before, and it was sent to the orders committee, and then the orders committee didn't talk about it. But you so didn't a, show up. You didn't. Well, I'm not on the orders committee. You, you, it's your ordinance. You're the one. Y'all the one that sent it to the orders committee. Y'all talk about it all y'all want. We to. didn't like it, so we didn't. We didn't move forward with it. So, so now I'm putting it back on another introduction. <laughs> So you don't want to discuss it, ordinance, to try to get it I'll, right? I'll discuss it at the public hearing all you want. I have some questions about it, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Ms. Alva. Okay, so this is being um, played out on a national and state level. Why are you trying to bring this to Livingston Parish? And have you considered other um, issues just like this with Meta and other spyware? Oh, it's, if you, I think if you read the ordinance, it talks about two specific or two specific apps, TikTok and WeChat, both owned by the Communist Chinese Party. Period. Yeah. Right. So, 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 look, if y'all look, Ms. Sanifer, if y'all don't want to ban it, if you want to let the Communist Chinese Party continue to get information on limits and parish in the government on government computers, okay. that's fine with me. I want to talk I'm about offering it. it. I'm offering it up for introduction. I don't want you to become no, emotional. No, I just want to talk about it with you. The reason it's being introduced is it's being discussed on a national level. It's being discussed on a state level. We can take action now instead of waiting for a long-term debate at the state or national level. It doesn't, but it's the national level is not to ban it nationwide at this point in time. It's only being addressed right. on governmental right. computers. Let's go ahead and move forward, y'all. Let's get this back on to the back on track. One second. Let me, let me see what we got our plan here. Um, so, what is your motion again to introduce it? You, 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 you want to introduce it's, it? It's an introduction. All right. And then, is there a substitute motion to do anything to send it back to the ordinance, or just to? Oh, there it is. I'll make a substitute motion to send it back to ordinance. And to not. Let and it to come. not let it come back here until we discuss it on the or at the ordinance committee. There's a reason that we have an ordinance committee, and it's to discuss ordinances. I have no objection. Senate ordinance. 
No. Don't get Is there a second to her motion? You ain't got second a second. Mr. Garland, let's call for the vote, Ms. Sandy. Because oh. understand, this is for going to the Orange Committee, and it will not come back to this council until he goes That's to the Orange. That's fine. All right, Ms. Sandy, call for the vote. Mr. Early House. Yes. Mr. Matt Morris. Yes. Mr. Keene. Yes. Mr. Talbert. Yes. Mr. Delat. Yes. Mr. Wascombe. Yes. Ms. Sandifer. Yes. Mr. R. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yeah. Uh, since the council has requested, if it gets asked to put back on the council agenda, Ms. Sandy, we will not do that. As, okay? We will not do it until it goes through ordinance committee. Introduction of ordinance supporting the Second Amendment of the United States, Mr. Ard. I, I didn't go to ordinance committee with it, but so I think it's only fair that it goes back to ordinance. <laughs> Even though we've done had a whole resolution and discussed it, but it's only fair that it goes back to ordinance. You mean committee. I'm the only one who gets a pass tonight? I guess so. What the I heck? Mean, it's, it, Do you want it to go to ordinance, Jeff? It doesn't need to. We've already make passed a the resolution and had a discussion on it, but. I mean, I'll make a motion to pass it, but if y'all want to make a substitute to go back to ordinance, I don't have a problem with it. I'll second I'll that. Se second I'll by Mr. Keene. Is there any discussion? A call for the vote. Oh, I, I have a question. When he's saying it's going back to ordinance, it's, it's not. not. No, no, we're going to vote it up. What he's saying is y'all are taking it back to discuss it, correct? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. At the next meeting. Correct. Yes. That's what I just want a clarification. Yes. Call the vote. This will be proposed to Ordinance 23-13 and Ordinance to amend Article 1 in general of Chapter 2, Administration of the Code of Ordinances of Lewis and Parish, by adding Section 2-27, Second Amendment Sanctuary, to declare and express the Livingston Parish Council's support of the Second Amendment and to declare the Parish of Livingston as a Second Amendment Sanctuary Parish and to further provide with respect thereto. The public well, hearing will be at 6 p.m. on April 27th. Introduce that ordinance that Jeff just done. Uh, you want to call the vote now, Ms. Sandy? Mr. Gerling House. Yes. Mr. Mike Morris. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Talbert. Yes. Mr. Delat. Yes. Mr. Wascombe. Yes. Ms. Sandifer. Yes. Mr. R. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yes. Hey, Jeff. Uh, I, item 30. Uh, it's another ordinance by Mr. Talbert. I, it's clearing and grubbing. Isn't it kind of the same thing as the other two? I recommend that it go before the planning commission. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ordinance, the ordinance committee. Oh, whatever ordinance committee. Somewhere. Y'all got plenty of work to do. Is all I take. Hi. Um, and we're not you would, you would think that those that. things sent forth by the planning commission could well, be. We don't, I don't no, think let's, send it, let's send it back to ordinance. Let them hash it uh, out. Ms. Morgan? Y'all skip 29, they're saying Thank that. You. From someone that emails y'all and ask about discrepancies in y'all's ordinance, who do we need to email? Because clearly we're emailing the wrong person. I can answer that question. Yes, please. There's an ordinance committee, and I had a conversation with the planning director the other day. Okay. It would be wise for the planning director and the review engineers to come to the ordinance committee meetings and put their impact, their feedback at those meetings and help us get these ordinances right. If we try to hurry up and rush these ordinances through, it creates major problems for the people of Livingston Parish. So the answer to that question is, is you need to email the chair of the Livingston Parish Council ordinance and, the ordinance and the ordinance committee chair. Now, you're welcome to go through any councilman, but I'm just saying some ordinances are so important and Usually need such long call, debate that they need to go the through the ordinance committee. We just call the council office and we talk to one of the girls. That's fine with me, too. Okay. Well, that's not working. So we need to make sure we're sending an email and y'all are all CC'd on it. That's fine, too. Um, and can we get, a, or I at least, can I get an agenda for y'all's ordinance committee meeting? You're welcome to get that, too. Yes, ma'am. Will they, like, they send those out? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mark, Thank you, Morgan. Mark, Appreciate you very what, much. What was your comment? Well, my comment was You said you, 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 you sent it to our council clerks and what? Number 30 is actually super important that needs to get ironed out in our ordinances. And so I need to make sure we're going through the pop, proper channels because clearly there's some miscommunication somewhere. I mean, I'm all for going to the ordinance committee. That's great. But I could have, like, this could have been sooner if we would have went to the right person to begin with. Understand, but you made the comment. So we sit on a personnel committee now to represent the people here for the clerks. So I want to clarify that conversation you had or who you sent it to that it didn't get sent out to the right people. All right, thank you. We can all get it. We know right. what's going on at the ordinance committee. So too. let's just, we'll just that, send that back to the ordinance committee then. Uh, you missed 29. That's I'm Morgan. going back right now. Introduction of ordinance amending section 105. 100-5 penalty for violation of this chapter and adding to allow enforcement of officers to write citations, summons, and court appearances. Mr. Talbert. I'll send it to the Ordinance Committee. 
All right, what is this one about, Gary, real quick? This is about, this is about allowing uh, the people that work for the planning department and work for them, those, 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 that complaint department that we have set up, you know, those guys to go out and have specific enforcement authority to write citations. But look, I, we, I, I personally talked to Sam about this too. So. Okay. I mean, no, look, I don't, I whatever mean, works the best. If it, if it needs a good ordinance, send it ordinance. I'm fine Don't do us no good to have laws and we don't have anybody out there to enforce them. What do you think, I mean, Shane? Well, Jeff, I mean, have, have you looked at the ordinance and put it together? I think. I mean, is it ready to go, you think? Or is it, I'm sure there's a lot of questions that a lot of people would like answered. You know, it would be good to discuss the intent and, I mean, a violation on what? You know, what specifically? Any any violation of any ordinance? You know, you can get a citation. I, guys, these are important ordinances. I think what they need to go to the ordinance committee. And, and if we need to go weekly, we can go weekly on the ordinance committee Look meetings. Like you don't have to. <laughs> you know? Mr. Garland, I'm sorry. I'd like to say, look, uh, the mic. Year, even, sorry. even like years ago, uh, I mean, last year, year before, we, we've all agreed that things should at least pass through the ordinance committee. This is nothing new. Right. I, mean, I agree. Um, just to go back on what previous 20 through 4 through 30, I guess. But, um, but I do have questions about this one, too. Uh, what, what Mr. Max said, citations for what? You know, um, I obviously summons for court appearances. There are nuances there that I think you, we take a chance. It seems kind of clear, but there's nuances there we might overlook. Um, they've been operating the way they have for, what, almost a century? They can wait another two weeks. Yep. All right. I agree. Well, that's item 29. So all of, everybody's in favor of sending that to the Ordinance Committee? Yeah. Any motion second? Yeah. 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 I'll make a motion to the ordinance. What's that? I'll make a motion to send the ordinance. Motion second. by Ms. Talbert, second by Ms. Santa. For all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. We're going to ordinance with it. 30 has already been taken care of. Item 31, uh, adopt a resolution to authorize an additional amount to be paid monthly for one year for the Justice of the Peace Constable Supplemental Pay. Mr. DeLatte. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been contacted by most of the JPs and... Uh, <laughs> and uh, constables. In October this year, the statement I've read, I've got is a statement from Bodie White's uh, office that a constable, I mean a JP has furnished me. It said, during the September Joint Legislative Committee budget meeting, Senator Bodie White clarified that the one time $240 of money was intended to be paid out on a monthly basis to all parish JPs and constables. Our Livingston Parish JP and constables have reached out to me to investigate when they're going to start receiving their supplemental pay. They ask, is it going to be a 13 check, month check? Is it going to be paid in monthly? Or are they going to catch up on it? We, we Livingston, have been receiving this like all parishes in the state since October of last year. And we haven't paid it out to the JPs. It needs to be paid. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, request that administration pays this, and administration can determine whether they want to pay it on a 13 yeah, check or awesome. pay it monthly or however they want to deal with it. But I'd like to put that in a monthly that we request that administration that pays this. Scooter? Yes. Motion by Mr. DeLatte, second by Mr. Keene. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> All right, well, let's see. Item. 32 and 33, or those, let's see. Well, let, let's take, thir I guess they're two different things, Randy. You I'm just not skip sure. 32. I'm just going to co-sponsor Randy's resolution. Okay. So let, you want to pick up? Well, let's do 32. Uh, adopt resolution. Well, it's the same thing. Let's just do 33. Thir three, okay. Mr. DeLatte, uh, endorse legislation by Bill Wheat and Sherman Mack. Basically, what we have here is uh, two bills being passed by, uh, being authored by Representative uh, Mack and two bills by Representative Bill Wheat. It seems that both of these bills would be in the best interest of Livingston Parish. The bill by Sherman, uh, Representative Mack, uh, mandates that, uh, let me read it from the first page. 
at a local election before carbon capture is forced on the citizens of the parish that a local election will be called to, so the citizens can vote yes or no. That's a very important bill and, and Mr. Mack has introduced this bill. In addition to that, Mr. Mack has said <clears throat> another bill he has introduced is to mandate that we store the carbon in the Gulf of Mexico. Both of those bills would be in the best interest of Lipson Parish in my opinion. Representative Bill Wheat has a bill that's going to create a 10-year moratorium on carbon capture in Lake Marpaw, and he has another bill that requires a carbon capture in the lake to require an environmental impact statement. There's also another bill, I'm going to ask Mr. Mack if he's in, in favor, is um, Robbie C Carter is introducing a bill that they can't come and take your land from uh, in eminent domain. Thanks. And so that's also a good bill. We can add it to the resolution. Okay. Yep. But I like to make that. Me and Shane motion. would like to make that motion, if, if possible. Motion by Mr. Delat, seconded by Mr. Mack. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Any other more discussion? Uh, hey. I'll, Mr. McMar. So just just to be clear, uh, all the parishes around Lake Marpaul is also supporting the St. John, St. James. Tangible Parish. Kim Coates was here at our meeting Thursday night. Just want to make sure all the citizens know. We all band in together to make sure this happens right. So I appreciate that. Where's what, Sandy? Where would you like it sent to? Who, who would you like it to? I'm assuming it has to go through to, to the governor's office and to the state legislators. Yeah, and and we're going to want to make sure that the committee, um, the National Resource Committee, that's going to be hearing these bills in the committee, every single one of those members get get a copy, and we'd we'd like it read out in in the meeting. You might want to have. do that FedEx because we started today, right? All right, so um, no, the committee meeting is, is, is not today to hear the bills. Okay. Whatever day. Was there a discussion? You're right, though. It needs to be done soon. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. You give us your name. My name is Tori. Um, I also wanted to bring it to the council's attention. There is another bill by Representative Mack that brings any um, uh, carbon dioxide injection and sequestration before the people for an election within the parish before that's, they can be that's sold. That's the one All right, said. thank you. I wanted to make sure that was it. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Tory. That's, it's good to have a state rep assistant sitting right here in the council meetings. So I had a motion by Mr. Y'all want to copy the bills that y'all don't have currently? I thought we got them right here. Y'all talking about these are some of the other ones that y'all have yeah. brought oh, the, out. The latest ones. Okay. Uh, call for the vote, Miss Sandy. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, you want to say something? Y'all want to talk about it? Want to talk about it? Y'all, y'all, y'all want to? We, we still we got to this, I mean, we have public discussion. We got to get on the. I'm sorry. I thought I thought everybody was in favor of it, Rain. Uh, Gary. Gary. Okay, so. Uh, Mr. Bill Wheat's bill that talks about the environmental impact statement, uh, the EPA considers a class five permitting process to be a functional equivalent of an, of an environmental impact statement. And all these projects will have to have a class five well, exploratory well done to determine the structure of, of the uh, geology. There was a class five that's being drilled in Morpal. There's a class five that, be, that was drilled in Holden. And the EPA considers that the permitting process of a class or the permitting process of a class six well is a functional equivalent of an environmental impact study. So I'm not sure why and, and then, uh, it's not part of the current, you know, regulations or set forth by DQ as part of the Louisiana Constitution. Um, the, the concern is that is that we have tremendous corridors set up already through some of these areas you're talking about doing this restriction of pipelines. Are we gonna are we gonna go back and negatively impact these pipelines in the future? You know, so I mean basically what we're talking about is, you know, the, the Green New Deal, contrary to what everybody says, is not a is not a policy set forth by the Democrats. That was a bipartisan policy adopted in the Trump administration. And, and the reason for carbon capture and sequestration is part of the is part of the new green deal. So contrary to what anybody might think that 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 you know Mr. Wheat's bill with respect HB 267 with respect to the 10 year moratorium is already is already the state's already signed contracts with respect to carbon capture and sequestration on Two different projects: the Capio, the Capio project with Grand Fuels in West Baton Rouge Parish, 
and then the uh, air products uh, <coughs> storage agreement that we all know about in Lake Marapaw. There are also, so, so my question is, we're endorsing bills that, that are run contrary to what's already happened with respect to state law and some other things that are, that are going forth. Uh, Mr. Carter's bill about, uh, about uh, the uh, Appropriation. The expropriation is is a problem in the fact that some of these land some of these lands you can't even get a hold of all the owners. Meaning that because of because of you know secessions and other things and, and people failing to you know follow secession at different points in time, there might be one piece of property that never got subdivided and has now has a hundred owners. It's a problem that exists throughout the state in all kind of areas, and and the and, and they're not talking about, uh, they're talking about just basic being able to if they're you know they can have the majority of property owners sign, but if they can't go in and solve particular problems because you can't find landowners, then it shuts projects down that 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 could possibly be good projects. So what I'm saying is that some of these bills that we're endorsing create other problems that are going to exist in the state at a later date. I mean, I'm just wondering if anybody read what all these bills do. What, I mean, I understand that if you're against, you know, CCS, carbon capture and sequestration, all these bills hinder it. But if they looked at what the impact of these bills have on other parts, on other parts of the industry and other things that exist, I mean, so look, Obviously, there's enough. Hold on one second. Uh, I broke your head. So let him finish. Okay. I, finish. I mean, obviously, there's enough support on the council. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have any. I mean, I'm. Look, I'm. I'm just. I'm talking. I'm, I guess I'm talking. <laughs> uh, I'm concerned though that while we like the bill going to the Gulf, we're going to have to build pipelines through through hun hundreds of miles through fragile coastal you know environments. I'm just not sure why when a lot of stuff currently exists. That we're not going to utilize it. But look, I, I had to make my comment. Are we done there? I'm done. Hey, Mr. McMars, I'll get with you, Randy. Go yeah. Ahead. We have all the pipe pipelines we need to go to the Gulf right now. From Ascension Parish to the Gulf. Oh, to, to do that. To do to, it. To do it. Mr. DeLatte? Yes. Basically, um, I know where Gary where he was going at, and, and I want to clarify one thing. I'm not against carbon capture sequestering or any of that. I'm against it not the people having a say so in it and that's all these bills is doing is giving the people a say so now i do think that it should go to the gulf of mexico and and instead of putting it on people that don't want it and the reason it doesn't go to the gulf of mexico is because it cuts their profit they just hired 25 new lobbyists to be, get this through here 25 brand new ones lobbyists won't they spend that money in this parish that they say we're getting so much money from? We don't, we're not getting a dime from this to start with. Uh, I'm in full support of this, but not only am I in full support, the people are. The people, for a year and a half, we have been fighting this. I've been to 30 meetings, I bet you, in Baton Rouge with sometimes as high as 100 people, citizens that have taken off their time during the day. And they got kids playing ball, they got jobs, they got things to do too. But it, it makes a lot when we at the mineral board, Shane, uh, uh, Gerald, and you got 50 to 100 people behind you, it makes a big difference. But you know what they told us? Where's the parish president? Where's the representative? Where's the rest of the council? Somebody needs to stand up and let them know that we're here. And let's speak now. So your motion does that? Yes. Is, did you second it, Mr. King? Mm -hmm. Nope. Who seconded it? Mr. Mack seconded that. Yeah. Uh, did you want to say something about this as well? Or? He's a co-sponsor. He didn't second. He's a co-sponsor. Okay, so you second it. How about that? <laughs> All right. Is there any more discussion? Mr. Abby Crosby, come on up. That's enough. Sit down. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 oh, Facebook will blow up now. All right, go ahead. Um, Mr. King. You just had a recently a conservation. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, and how do you feel about this? 
about these bills about the the air products and everything coast i think it's ridiculous and that's not going to do any good okay and how does this affect your what's your coastal conservation i don't know that i'm not part of the cca corporate you know they, they haven't even mentioned whether this would affect them at all um i would think personally that the if they do it offshore yes it would be be beneficial to the to the fishing industry mm -hmm. every time they put rigs and everything out there it it makes more you know habitat i have no idea what cc uh cca's stance is on this okay. i can find out because i just saw a post by uh represented buddy mincy mm -hmm. where y'all recognized him and everything he was the one that voted for this and brought this in to our parish that was so, corporate that did that. yeah yes, ma'am so that's why i think it would be kind of like a conflict of interest because that's for coastal restoration and conservation because we spent millions of dollars through grant money to be able to buy that property <laughs> for this and now we have fish coming up through fema and everything like that we oh, had yeah, projects yeah. you mean so, the lake yes Actually, around the yeah, lake yeah. and everything mm -hmm. and so it does affect the ecosystem so that's what i'm just saying it was just kind of like kind of threw me off so i wanted to get your perspective on that yeah we'll see how it thinks when that vote right. comes up just a sec yeah oh no it's a good question and and we we have i haven't been involved in any talks with cca because we have paid people that handle all that stuff we're just volunteers for to raise money to protect what we think is something we need to protect. You know. Can we get them on Lake Moore, Paul? Sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I'll call. All right. So the motion and the second. Oh, we have another audience member, Miss Tori Email, I believe. <laughs> I, um, as a legislative assistant, I have had the privilege of reading all of these bills, and I do commend the council for supporting them because they do give the voice back to the people on this particular issue. So thank you. Thank you, Miss Miss Tory. All right, uh, no more to do. Uh, we had a motion by Mr. Randy, seconded by Mr. Mack. Uh, Miss Sandy, call for the vote. Girling House. Yes. Mr. Mac Morris. Yes. Mr. Keene. Yes. Mr. Tower. No. Mr. Delat. Yes. Mr. Wascom. Yes. Ms. Sandifer? Yes. Mr. Ard? Yes. Mr. Mack? Yes. Item 34, discussion of a public boat launch in French settlement located where the new bridge is being installed. <laughs> Mr. Randy DeLapp. Uh, I actually would like to see if I can get a motion to maybe have AFA or somebody draw up uh, a boat launch. Second. <laughs> and then ask and ask the uh, administration if they would allow that and apply for a grant. I think while Life and Fishery has money available for boat launches. All right, we had a motion by Mr. DeLatt, seconded by Mr. McMorris. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me make a comment about this. When I read this um, on the agenda, I, I got a little excited. I go over that bridge all the time, and I had lots of ideas for that bridge, but I will say Mr. DeLatt rose to the occasion and come up with an idea of a boat launch. And I don't see why Wildlife and Fisheries wouldn't pay for the boat launch, because they could sit right there and write so many tickets with people <laughs> coming through, just like they do on the Diversion Canal at uh, Hilltop. It, I mean, they would be glad to pay a three-boat launch, and you know, you have parking under that new bridge right there. Then you could have a spot for a bait shop. I just think this could be absolutely fantastic. So I just want to commend you on that thought, Randy. It, it's so good. We ought to do it on both sides of the river. <laughs> Two of them. So uh, <laughs> we had, it's, but, but let me say this, uh, Mr. Eddie Idell helped draw some plans for the city of Dunn Springs at an old park. We were going to have a boat launch up at, for kayaks, canoes, because the admit river's too small in Denham, but they did a great job drawing some plans. So if, if that's your motion, I and, like, and yes. we had a second by Mr. McMorris. Mr. McMorris. Ms. Sandy, call for the vote. Mr. Allen House? Yes. Mr. McMorris? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Talbert? Yes. Mr. DeLatte? Yes. Mr. Wascombe? Yes. Ms. Sandifer? Yes. Mr. R? Yes. Mr. Mack? Yes. Item 35, adopt a resolution following, uh, add the following roads for consideration to 2023 pri priority overlay. Uh, number 1A, Snowden Avenue in District 5, Ms. Sandifer? A motion to add that All to right. the 2020. Right. A B, Live Oak Avenue, located District 2. Mr. Talbert, you good with that? Cal Calmes Road, located in District 2. Mr. Calvert, I spoke with the mayor, Gerard Landry, today. He had a list, a couple of them, and some people had asked me to also add Benton, Myra, Montgomery, Angie, and Dawes. So they, and they're sure that all those won't make the cut, but he, they, he sees them coming. So. Four to look at. So that's four to look at. So is there a motion for that? 
Motion by Mr. Gerlinghouse, second by Mr. King. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Adopt a resolution to authorize waiver of section 125.37 requirements for minor subdivision for Philip Woods, who wishes to consolidate, divide his property consisting of 20.29 acres for his children, and he requests a servitude reduction from 60 foot to 30 to 40 foot. This is in Mr. Max district. Yeah, Mr. Philip Woods has been on that property from before I was born, so I don't really know how long because he's been on it since before I was born. And this is for his kids, and uh, and he's getting on up in age, and he wants to subdivide this, and he wants a 40-foot servitude. I went and looked at it, and it, it's going to fit the property well. I'd like to make the motion that we grant this waiver. Motion by Mr. Mack. Second by Mr. DeLatt. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, item 37, adopt resolution authorize a waiver of section 125-176, definitions to allow a third address on eight acres. This is in Mr. Ard's district. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, it's eight acres. They got plenty of room, so I make that motion. You know, if you can't, if you can't do a waiver or something like this for family, what is life about if you can't help family? I make a motion by Mr. Uh, Ard, seconded by Ms. Sanifer. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 38, adopt a resolution to authorize a waiver. Uh, definitions allowing a second address to a non-linear relative niece located at Stacy Lane in Walker. Mr. Gerlinghouse. Um, I'd like to defer this until the next meeting. All right, this item will be deferred. Item 39, adopt Also a defer, 39. Oh, 39? Yeah, we're going to defer that one as well. Item 40, adopt a resolution to authorize a waiver section requirements for minor subdivisions to allow a six, division of 60 acres of property into five tracks. This is all in Christie Lane in Mr. Ard's district. Yeah, and these lots are gonna be so big, I, I don't have a problem with it either. I mean, that's what we want, is bigger lots, so. Motion I'll by make Mr. That Ard. Motion. Second. Second by Mr. DeLatt. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 41. Zoning reclassification request. This is a request to rezone parcel 0156240 from unclassified to R2. This is in Mr. DeLatt's. It's on McCarroll Road, I believe. Make that motion. Motion by Mr. DeLatt. Second. Second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, request to reclassify parcel 0039875. This is at 38965 Walker North. Uh, this is from Sing, rural single family to residential multifamily in Mr. Ard's district. You familiar with it, Jeff? I, I am, and uh, he kind of started working on this before we did the uh, zoning. zoning. So uh, that's what we're I, here for. I'm, yep. Motion I'm good by Mr. With Ard. It. I'll make that motion. Second by Mr. Keene. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Item C, 41C, request to reclassify parcel 0243402 02, located in Macklin Road, residential single family, to residential single family R1. Uh, this is in Mr. Ard's district. Uh, William Starkey, I believe. Is. Yep, same thing. This is a big piece of land that he's subdividing, so uh, I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Ard. Second. Second by Mr. DeLatt. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 42, a resolution to authorize a waiver of section 117-146 to allow a property partition of one half acre zoned residential rural single family, Mr. Gerlinghouse. This is an existing trailer. Um, it's, it's been here. Uh, I zoned the property R1, but. Uh, and and trailers aren't allowed. It's so already there. So um, I second so it. I'm going to make the motion. To I just, second it. To, to make that legal. Yes. For a waiver for that yes. specific spot. Motion by Mr. Gerlinghouse, second by Mr. DeLatt in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 43, adopt a resolution to. Authorize a waiver of section 125.37 requirements for minor subdivisions to allow six lots on a servitude located on a private road off Milton Road for Chris Ilgenfritz. Okay, okay. Uh, this is in your district, Tracy? Yes. Um, Mr. Ilgenfritz had, before, before zoning, had put this property out, was going to do a development, and decided he was going to reshape this. Um, it actually, but in the way he did it, it's going to require uh, a waiver. It's 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 a, it's a good size, but the, uh, just to give a little more context to this, this is uh, at the end of Milton Road, and I plan on 
uh, redoing the zoning for the entirety of Milton Road. Um, Milton Road is kind of an eyesore in my district. It's bad. The, the front section is good. The back pretty, section is good. Pretty well known. Yeah, yeah. the middle is uh, to say. I don't think there's a word I could say that, I've heard, that would I've uh, seen, whatever I've we can do. And to so make it you know, I, that's one piece of one it, road that I was going to get. I'm going to get around to. I'm going to go probably lenient on that as possible, um, as far as the amount of houses just to make this area attractive for development because if you saw if you saw what's going on there in the middle section of that road uh houses is, is a is a very much more acceptable alternative so uh, motion mo motion second. second by mr jeff Ard. any discussion any all in favor say aye aye, aye. motion carries item 44 i believe has been pulled am i correct mr talbert uh, that's yeah, that's, that, that's been resolved. Uh, I, yeah, that's been resolved. 45 to adopt a resolution of support of House Bill 571. Mr. Talbert, did you? Is that the same thing that we already picked up, or is that uh, 571 is a bill by Representative Sheck Snyder? Is that uh, regarding carbon capture? Or? It is. It is about. It is. It is related to carbon capture, but it is more related to uh, it, about about notification. And some changes to uh, liability and part of the trust fund and how the parish will get paid. So if you go back and, 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 and think about some of the things that we heard initially when this first came about is nobody knew about it. They weren't notified properly. Next thing we know that it's, it's you know, the state's already signed contracts and, and ultimately you know what is the parish going to get out of it so hb 571 implements a 30 percent revenue share for local parishes on state co2 storage agreements which in our particular situation would be uh, the lake Maurepas agreement with air products it creates an extraction tax if co2 is extracted after storage with a 75 percent of the tax going to local governments it provides for additional notice to local parishes directly affected by a CO2 sequestration project. Notice must be provided directly to parish government for one CO2 storage agreements, both public and private, two class four, I mean class five and class six permit applications, and three seismic permit applications. Changes the time period from 10 to 50 years to obtain a post-injection certificate of completion and directly relink links issuance of certificate certificate to actual closure of the facility and increases the amount of money in the co2 storage trust fund by requiring five million per storage facility rather than five million per operator but there is a cap of 10 million per operator so basically in the past the way it was originally written is that if you have a co2 storage facility there's a five million dollar cap per operator now it's going to be chalked, the, 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 the cap will be on facilities, but if you operate more than one, you'll be capped at 10 million. Uh, and, the, uh, and it protects the fund from being swept. If you, if you know anything about state government and some of these trust funds that exist, stay getting a tight, they'll go rob money out of a trust fund. So this money that's set forth in the trust fund can never be accessed for anything but, but, but closure. There have been some there have been some points made uh, that like five million might not be enough to clean up if there's a problem. Five million is the, the, the part that goes in the trust fund. The trust fund, the five million isn't limited to a particular site, meaning that right now we know of two sites that the state has, plus there'll be other sites that come <laughs> forth. The trust fund, everybody will contribute to the trust fund. And if the trust fund's $100 million, then the $100 million, the, trust, the whole part of the trust fund can be used to clean up one particular site. Just like the Lust Trust Fund is utilized on gasoline, just because one site only pays in X number of dollars based on their gallons, you know, that, that's collected on sale gasoline, uh, if it costs more than they actually paid in under their, lust, under their volume agreement, the 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 lust the Louisiana Underground Storage Tank Fund would still pay for the cleanup of, of those particular 
sites. So the bills basically just man, m mandate no, that the money gets set aside if they do get it, that the yeah, so this the, parish the, will the, get the, it. I mean, a, can we just, is that I mean, good that's, enough? I mean, that's basically, yeah. that's, that's all that's we, not what the much, bill is, is it, Randy, you got some? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's it. Uh, what What is the percentage you said for the Lipston Parish up front? So, so, so here's the deal. So the state has a has signed lease agreements on the bottom of Morpaw, right? Mm -hmm. So this bill is only for Lake Morpaw or for all sites? Well, this bill is for any state-owned land situation. So the whole- Only state-owned land. State-owned state mm -hmm. land. So this, HBL 575 directly related to Lake Morpaw. Yeah. So you don't have to be for carbon capture to be in favor of this bill because this bill outlines notification and it outlines how the parish gets paid. So for example, of the 100% of the 20, of the 100% of the revenue per metric ton, which the projection puts the projection of revenue on <coughs> on the Lake Morpaw site will be twenty five million dollars annually to the state. And what and how they project that? How do they project based on, it? Based on the tonnage that that Air Products plans on injecting and the and the relationship. So like of gas, Garrett, cubic feet of gas. There's a price. Every metric like ton. So every metric ton has a dollar amount associated with the state contract. They feel like on the projections of the revenue that there'll be a 25 million dollar revenue stream to the state oh, of yeah. that revenue stream 30 percent will go to the parishes now given the fact that Morapaw is attached to what four or five different parishes tangy livingston ascension st charles is it st john and is it st charles is there another it's just the four parishes okay so the four parishes, basically, there are lines that exist now based on, you know, parish lines throughout Lake Marpo. The, 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 the charges that are going through now, the seismic is to determine where the storage space is. So you'll get paid based on the plume. The pay will not be based on where the wells are drilled for injection. The pay will be based on the plume. The feeling is, based on the old geology that they've looked at, that the that Livingston Parish will have between 30 and 40% of the plume in their waters. 30 to 40% of the 30%. The 30%. So basically what you're looking at on a $25 million projection, you're looking at the, the, the parish is getting seven and a half million of that based on the based on the 30%, if my math is correct. And of the seven and a half million <laughs> that would be paid annually, for example, if Livingston Parish, if we took an average, you know, they thought 30 to 40, if you took a 35% share and said that our plume was 35%, then Livingston Parish budget would, would, would gain another $2.625 million annually based on the deal. Look, I, everybody's got a different viewpoint on, on, on carbon capture. Look, there's a train coming. You can either get run over by it or you can steer it. And I think in this particular situation, you know, whether you like Representative Sheck Knight or not, he's he's moved forward to do some things to do some additional protections, you yeah. know, in the fact that, that typically there's been a 10 year deal. It's going to be a 50 year situation now. And then, uh, hold on. Hold don't on. want to go ahead and vote? Is there any more? I mean, look. <laughs> Let's I, go ahead and vote. Is there anybody I, else has something? Let's give somebody else. If anybody talks that long, we're going to be another an hour and a half. No, no, so. I mean, I just I do. To go. I was just trying to okay, outline okay, what the Let's hold on I mean, so. This is the first time that I have looked at this, and I would like a little bit more time to look at this. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. I just need more time to look at it if that's, I don't. I don't think you know, I mean, you're not gonna have time. This, I, I think, Clay, the bill, the bill was pre-filed. Has been, it, it was pre-filed just like all the other bills. It's been read in. I think it's scheduled. In, it's scheduled before our next meeting to go through, through, go through committee and then be held come, on the floor. Come on up. Okay. Yeah, we need to. Right, so we need to go, Mr. McMar. So listen, they forced this on us. People that was up here voted for it. All representatives. They forced it on us. We get zero dollars right now. If they keep forcing it on us, we're going to get zero if this don't pass. He's Jeff, supported. am I correct or wrong? We said at right. meetings, You're trying correct. to understand, Randy. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what we need to do here. 
Uh, well, to me, it's a slap in the face. And the reason it's a slap in the face because that's no money for all the stuff that they're doing to our lake. That's, that's right. no money. I understand. And, and. I all right. Uh, let's let Mr. Eric Harrell. I ain't heard from him in a while. Go ahead, slap him. There you go, Red. That's enough. No, go ahead. I'm just. Um, Eric, uh, I live 1,500 feet from where they're leasing 33,000 acres. You're telling me that the other bills, you know better than me what's good for me. No, oh, that's, that's basically what you said whenever you voted no. That's exactly what you did. Yes. Did you? All right, uh, Ms. Toy, go ahead. Just to let y'all know, I'm looking at the bill right now. It does say 30% of the revenue shall be remitted to the governing authority of the parish located in the specific area of interest. If the specific area of interest is located in more than one parish, the money shall be divided between the parishes in proportion to the amount of property located in each parish pursuant to the contractual agreement. So the 30% isn't going to be the full 30% to Livingston Parish. It will be split between the different parishes that are in that special area. Always. I just wanted to make that clarification. So you get 15%. Yeah, he said that. Hold on. Okay. He well, said it. Is there 15%? Uh, everybody else had something to say about this. So your motion is, what you, Randy, you got something to say? Uh, I mean, he's made a motion, and, and, and I know what you're saying, that something's better than nothing, but 7% to list in Parish. I think I would rather see something sponsored where we can get, can charge something. You know, give us the opportunity to set, we set taxes, okay. sales taxes, so we so set Randy, property. So, so let's, it's let's, a state let's, issue, right? Let's, so state, well, let's talk about that. I, I got no issue with talking about that, because, because the, the lake bottom's not out. We can argue about that, but the lake bottom belongs to the state. So the state has negotiated the contract already. And the state's, and, and, and this bill gives the parishes that have lines above the bottom but don't own the bottom a royalty. I mean, let's face it. However, the well drilled Hold it. Holden in Holden is paying royalties to the landowners. However, the, the, the question is that we need to we need to investigate it and we need to ask our Living Parish delegation because this is a fiscal session. So fees and taxes can, bills don't have to be pre-filed. They can be filed up until the 19th, Tory, is that what we're looking at? So in essence, the question is, and Mr. And Mr. Moody could help us, could this parish charge a 10% fee or 10% tax on revenue generated by the drilling of, of wells and carbon sequestration within the parish? We're not entitled to a royalty because we're not the landowner. But could we create a tax or a fee of 10% against the revenue generated by the injection of, uh, of carbon? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. you understand what I'm talking about? So, I agree with that. Look, look, I want to point something out. I don't know if y'all realize it. On Duff Road, on Duff Road, there is an oil well, an oil well with old by, old by right? Yep. That oil well has been leased out. Carbon dioxide is injected daily into the ground there at higher pressures in shallower formation <coughs> for, the for, the, for the reclamation of oil right now. That's what's, I mean, it's happening in our parish today. And you know what we're getting out of it? Zero. Right. And, and I agree with that. And that's what I'm saying. There should be a mechanism. I just don't want to get tied into 6% is what well, we well, get well, out of 30%, well, look, well, and right. then we don't have the ability to come back and charge the 10% you're all, talking all about. All I'm telling you is that at, at, under the current situation, the best option that we have for getting paid by air products on Lake Mar Marpaul is House Bill 571. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling you that 30% is what we, I'm not telling you that 30% is what we're due. I'm just telling you that, that the Speaker of the House who represents part of this parish and who represents a second parish and who represents St. James, I guess, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know, wrote the bill and is given the parish, you know, the way that's structured 30% of the revenue. I can't tell you whether that's a fair part. That's what's existing now. All I'm saying is from a parish point of view, you know, uh, uh, an endorsement of, of that legislation, if you're not, you know, if you're not crazy about the revenue, we could say that we think we deserve more than 30%. 
I don't care what you do. I'm just saying that that it, it would be nice that if the four parishes that are that stand to get the revenue support the bill, because if they don't, these other places that aren't going to draw any money from it, they're giving up money that would normally go to the general fund. You know what I'm talking about? So if we're talking about 30% of 25 million, seven and a half million dollars to be divided among four parishes. If if this bill passes as it's structured based on projections. That and, I'll, and if this bill passes, whether we support it or not, we still get paid. We it's, still get paid. However, so, however, let's yes. face it. If I'm in Freeport, why the hell do I want to give Livingston Parish 30% of the revenue if Livingston Parish doesn't even support it and want it? It's 6%. You well, have, well, well, well Randy, come on up. If you I mean, six, well, 6%, six. Percent, it's based on the plume. I mean, so. It was changed. Come on up. Come on up. If you would, try to make it quick. I know we're. I'm quick. Jennifer Holden. I live in French Settlement, LA Trace Road. Um, I have a question. So, when our lake turns to garbage because this fails, and I'm pretty sure that it will because it's soft bottom, it's a lake bottom. Why are we doing this in the lake? We should be preserving this. Our kids and my grandkids are going to get to enjoy it for a short time. What's going to happen? We talk about the money that's going to go to Livingston Parish, St. Jane Parish, and blah, blah, blah. What happens when our waterfront properties lose its value? Because it will happen. If that lake goes to crap, then our properties that we have already put money into, well, we will lose it and we will be lost all the way. We'll never get it back. And we've already seen this play out when they had the sinkhole. We all know which one I'm talking about. It's going to happen again. It's just a matter of when, not if. So we need to have a bigger conversation than just what each of these parishes are going to get because that does nothing for us homeowners that have busted our rumps for years to get our piece of the American pie. Ms. Holden, thank you so much. I, I got Mr. It. Aaron, you said you had one? Now, I, now you know I'm bending the rules to let you speak uh, twice. I know, I know you're bending the rules. Just go ahead and slap it, please. Just slap it. <laughs> go ahead. Um, there's nothing that addresses on the 33,000 acres that's up in Holden or any place in Louisiana right now. That last monitoring well that they're going to have on that 33,000 acres near me, that plume is not going to stay within that property boundary. It's not. There already has one in Illinois that's going past property boundaries. They're taking basically my mineral rights for, and I will file a class action also. Well, I would think you I mean, would. I, look, I agree. I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't disagree. I'm just telling you that, I mean. Well, I'm telling you it's a bunch of junk. You want to ban TikTok for China? All we're doing right here is basically letting them pollute more. That's it. All right. This will be the last one, Miss Bridget uh, Gilbert. Mr. I'm sorry, Gilbert. I keep wanting to say rushing. 238 North College East Stone Springs. Mr. Talbert, how often do we actually agree on anything? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, have, I don't <laughs> keep, I don't try not to keep score, Bridget. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to gather not much. 1%. 1%. 1%. <laughs> that the bill is in the legislature. You have to either agree with it and get somebody out there to support it or call the speaker to have him pull it back. That's your only two options here. You know, you could have him amend it, maybe put more monies in it, whatever you wanna do. But at 9.30 on next Thursday, it's going to Natural Resource Committee uh, meeting. So y'all need to make a decision on that not if the project's good, bad, or indifferent, <clears throat> is if you're gonna get money off of it. That is the issue that y'all have to decide. That's good. Ms. Skipper, what would you do? I, I'd take the damn money. I, <laughs> I wanna say something, John. John, I wanna, I wanna make a comment. Okay, see, right. John. John, I wanna make a comment. Okay, uh, bro, uh, I, that was the last audience, so, but we do have one more council member, Mr. Mack. He's been silent on this one, so Mr. Mack. Yeah, I just want to say I'm 100% against carbon sequestration in Lake Marpaul, and I'm 100% against putting it north of Holden next to them residential structures. But I will say that if this bill passes, it will be better for the people than it is today if the bill fails. So I'm going to vote 
far. Yes. Mr. McGarley, how? Well, Shane pretty much stole what I was going to say, but yeah, but I mean, but I, I do want to say, look, if it were up, if it were up to me, I'd ban all of them and kick them all out and tell them to never come back. Well, and that's that's tried. in the lake, that's in the. Um, on the property, and and I don't know way we can address that to some degree w while we're in the ban. You know, yeah. how you want to go forward on that. You know, how you want to move on that. It was a motion, correct, Mr. Howard? Uh, Mr. Holden, we've already. It, my, my, it, mine was just a motion. My, mine was a motion the, of support. And if, and, and, and if and if and if and if and if if Randy has a really big concern about the thirty percent. I don't I don't have a I don't have a problem with saying that the council would like to see that the parish share be greater than 30 percent. You know, I don't have an issue with that. <laughs> but but I think ultimately, I, I think I think what Shane said was right. And I'm, I'm going to have to say that me, me, and Ms., me and Ms. Bridget agree upon this particular one thing is that is that is that. This is not an endorsement of CCS by any stretch. Oh, okay, look, we're repeating ourselves, and I, I mean, I don't mean to shut you down, but we just keep. I, I understand. We've just got ready, folks. Uh, we had a motion. We need a second. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. Uh, can it, I think this is going to pass. What's that, Miss Sandy? To support House Bill five seven. To support House Bill five seven one. Resolution. Let's call for the vote, Miss Sandy. Mr. Garlinghouse? Yes. Mr. McMorris? Yes. Mr. Keene? Yes. Mr. Talbert? Yes. Mr. Delight? Yes. Mr. Wascom? Yes. Yes. Mr. R? Yes. Mr. Mike? Yes. All right. Uh, as I, I heard you say it. Take the money. Take the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, and look she for said, more in the future. Actually, she said something else. But okay. Committee reports, finance committee. Got to that. Did, uh, we didn't meet. Huh? We didn't meet. No, she's out of town, I think, even. Uh, but I, she's supposed to be back for the next meeting, right? Uh, ordinance committee, yeah. Shane. Yeah, here I am. So the ordinance committee met a couple of weeks ago. We're working on the uh, clarification on the classifications with the zoning. It's very, very important. Um, we're going to be finalizing that, and we're going to be introducing that here very soon in the next ordinance committee meeting we'll we'll go over the the, the final draft you know that we're going to be submitting and so we'd invite everybody to come um, and then there's multiple other ordinances that we'll try to tackle we're going to keep the ordinance meeting to a, a minimum of two hours I mean we're not going over two hours you know but we yeah a maximum of two hours <laughs> I, I don't want to go over two hours but um, we're probably going to need to have more more ordinance committee meetings to tackle all the things that we need to tackle i mean if y'all are not opposed to it i'm out of town tuesday wednesday thursday and friday saturday sunday <laughs> next week but i'm in town monday so if y'all want to have a meeting monday to try to let's get some it. of this hashed out let's let's let's, let's, let's do that we'll do it monday at six o'clock it's coming monday this coming monday at six o'clock we'll have us an ordinance committee meeting we'll go over as much as we possibly can accomplish as much as possible and uh, you know, try to deliver the service that the team is deserves. Is that going to give you enough time deserve. to publish it? Say that again. It's going to give you enough time to give it out to the public. Because you got Thursday. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. We just got to have it out. What about maybe tomorrow? Tonight. Tonight. They close tomorrow. Well, well, it'll be quick. We'll make it really quick. Just type it up and tape it, and we'll be good. Yeah. So. Um, Whatever time Randy wants. What, what time you want? 5.30. I can do 5. You want to do 5? <laughs> what do you think's know. best? <laughs> I can do 5.30. 5.30. 5.30 gives the uh, working man opportunity to get here. Yeah, let's do 5.30. All right. If it ain't no Anything else from, person, from a ordinance committee? Uh, no. We're How good. about personnel committee, Mr. DeLatt? Nothing. No, you had met, yeah, so yeah. no action or anything. Uh, item 47, Mr. Dis Attorney, I, I really need to know, can you give me a point of yeah. what that score is right 14 now? 14 to 6 LSU. Oh, 14 to 6 LSU. Seven, bottom of seven. Bottom of the seven. Top. No, no other report. No other report. Uh, hey, but he earned his money because he gave us the score hurt. on three different days. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming out this today. I know it was a long meeting, but it went a little better than I was expecting. And uh, thank you for Very suffering fast, through. Me, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. By Mr. Hart, second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. I'm in July.